Is Prehistoric Kingdom a dinosaur zoo game or is it an excuse for me to build a semi-accurate castle? Because that's what we're doing today. But anyways, before we get started with the video, don't forget to hit the like button because it does help out a lot. And now let's see what took me a week to finish. Alright. Who would have thought that building a complete semi-accurate castle would take a week to finish? Not me, because I originally went into this build thinking, oh yeah, I'm going to finish this castle in 3 days. Which could have been the case if I went for a very simplistic, minimalistic castle, but I am Poison Blade, I don't do simplistic, maybe minimalistic, but definitely not simplistic. But I could have finished the castle in 3 days, but then it would basically be reminiscent of like a kid's coloring book kind of castle, where like, oh yeah, it has walls, some towers, potentially a keep, maybe a gatehouse. Although not having a keep is somewhat accurate because there are cases of keepless castles, especially when the gatehouses became just huge. But I am poison blade. So this castle is just a whole lot of how much crap can I put in there, which isn't that inaccurate because yes, you could have like your kid's coloring book kind of castle, the very minimalistic castle, but you also had very just detailed or very just expansive castles. Like here is the thing with castles, yes it has a very defensive and strategic function of like defending an area and showing dominance over an area, but the other big function of a castle is of course residential. Not only the family who owns the castle lives there, but also their servants. Maybe if there's a chapel, there's a clergyman living there. Of course, guards and such, and craftsmen, because you have stables, and then you need to have like tools, of course, to work in the stables, or maybe a blacksmith, so you would have not only the owner of the castle, but by now you would have servants, craftsmen, clergymen, soldiers, you would have a lot of people living in the castle and you not only need places to have them live, like have them basically like have like sleeping quarters for the soldiers and the servants and such, but you also need places for them to work. And of course like the servants would work in the keep or would work in the main building thing, but then like your soldiers would need to be able to train somewhere. Probably in the yard, but you would also need like the chapel for the clergyman, you would need the stables for the stable boys and such. Like there's a lot of things that you could put in a castle that like makes complete sense. However for this castle I didn't put, put a blacksmith in there just because it didn't really fit in there. I didn't want to build a blacksmith basically because I knew like right from the get go. If I build a blacksmith, I want to like make it look like a blacksmith. So I would have found a way to make horseshoes and like the tools and everything. And I was just like, yeah, I already like as soon as I like was one day into building this, I was immediately like, yeah, I'm going to go way overboard with this. However, luckily, the only interior that I built for this entire castle is the stables. So yeah, I really helped myself back when it came to interiors, because I was also thinking like, oh, I could build the main hall as an interior. Poison, you're building an entire castle. It's all it's already taking a week. Don't build an interior for anything else because you don't want to spend a month on just one castle. Although I could probably have done that if I went fully insane. But yeah, when it comes to this castle, the idea for the castle was set right from the beginning. However, that's kind of a lie, but also not, because when it came to the beginning of Andros Island, when I was sculpting the island, I was immediately just like, alright, I need a hill overlooking the harbor that could potentially serve as a point of interest. Not just for a castle, but a palazzo. Because at that point, I wasn't sure if I wanted a palazzo or a castle, because the story now goes with Andros that it's kind of an abandoned, non-important island. So that meant to me like, oh yeah, castle wouldn't make that much sense if it doesn't really have that much importance to it. But then a palazzo would make more sense because, you know, you would always have like a wealthy family somewhere. So originally the idea was, oh yeah, let's build a palazzo on that hill. But I mean, for those who know me, you know that I won't pass up the opportunity to build a castle. <laughs> For some reason, like Eve Zoo is the only one so far free of castles. I could build a castle at Eve Zoo, but I'm not going to because I, I mean, well, the farm slash Poffertje's house is somewhat castle like. All right, nothing is free of castles when it comes to me. But when it came to this building, because I'm saying building because it's 
kind of a mix between the two ideas as you might potentially see right now on screen well actually should probably see right now on screen but uh, sometimes when it comes to editing the audio gets out of sync with what's actually visible on screen most notably when i make any video with face cams but when it comes to this castle i wanted to, to kind of mix those two ideas of yes mainly being a castle but slowly transitioning into more of a palace and so the entire storyline now with Andros Island is that at one point in history, maybe like mid medieval times, maybe early medieval times, it was a place of importance or strategic importance that Andros at one point was really important or somewhat important enough at least to need a castle or at least have the potential for a castle so to defend the area. Yeah, and really like dominate the area of course so at one point Andros was important enough maybe at one point it was like a stopping point for trade or something and so there was the potential or the need for a castle but by the time of like the renaissance era the importance of the island strategically was less and less important so the function of the castle slowly drifted away from oh a place of defensive importance and the function became more like oh it's a residence which of course it started off with that function as well but it, the residential function became more and more important as the defensive function waned and i wanted to just make that really visible in the facade so the idea was then oh let's take out the front facade of the main keep and replace it or renovate or update it to make it look more like a like palazzo like a sort of classical renaissance style facade and I didn't do the entire castle like this because first of all that would have been a lot of work <laughs> but also it would have taken a lot of time thinking realistically like taking out a facade and building an entire new one up would have historically taken quite some time because if you wanted columns you would have to carve them or have somebody carve them because most likely the owners of the castle wouldn't really do anything <laughs> you would have to carve columns and decorations or such or you would have stolen them from roman temples which i don't know how frequently it happened but it's happened frequently enough to be mentioned like just look at your like churches in like italy and such sometimes you might see a roman column in there or sometimes a roman temple was just completely transformed into a church biggest example of which is the pantheon yeah there are, that building used to think worship all of the roman gods and you can still see that in like all of the nissus surrounding the main um, or like the interior and yeah those st statues of like the roman gods were I think taken out in the uh, place to be just like altars for the church. But yeah, it took quite a long time is basically what I'm saying to like update your house and such to fit current styles or at least current styles, Renaissance classical styles. But back in those times, those were the current trendy styles, which just brought me to the point of like, yeah, back then a lot of like trends or a lot of like things that were seen as I'm just going to use the word trendy because I don't know any other word right now to really fit what I want to say. But a lot of those things, like it took so long before like things went out of style. And then I thought like, yeah, makes sense because it took a lot of time to adapt to styles. Not just like architecturally wise, because like, yes, architecture probably took the longest time to like really adapt to things. But also, if you look at like historical fashion, like you can see that like if there's like new styles, current styles just slowly morph into it instead of like old styles being completely discarded in favor of new styles. Like you can definitely see like if you look at like historical dresses that like they slowly morph into something new or into like what was considered trendy or what was considered like up to date styles. Like you can definitely see it in like all of the clothes as well that just things just slowly morph into something new or into current trendy style which is just interesting to me because like right now like it's so fast like i mean there it has a term like fast fashion that like things nowadays just move so fast and back then it isn't that like life back then was slower people went on as they did always but 
styles and such change so much slower just because it took so much longer to adapt to things because Yes, if you wanted a new facade, everything had to be carved by hand. Like if you wanted new windows, the windows had, like the glass had to be made by hand. The window sill and everything needs to be made by hand. If you wanted a new dress or robes or anything, had to be made by hand. I think like the fastest thing back then was probably like military like changes. Like of course you if somebody is using cannons you want to be able to use cannons as well you don't want to go up against cannons with a trebuchet so like maybe that changed the fastest just because you know you need that because if you're facing like guns with bows which they definitely probably had done back then but like you would be at a very big disadvantage then so maybe military things change the fastest but everything else like it just Maybe this is like completely wrong. I'm just going to say that. Maybe this is completely wrong and maybe things did change faster. Potentially faster when it came to like nobility and royalty because those had the money to be able to afford like, oh, you want a new dress? Yeah, let's pay 10 people to make it. Then of course it goes faster because there's more labor to do the same thing. But like if you were just like a middle class woman or man, you had maybe one seamstress or one tailor working on it because... Yeah, it costs a lot of money and then fabric costs a lot of money. I mean, back then it was like an opulent thing to do was just show how much fabric went into your clothes. Because fabric itself was expensive. And then you could uh, do a lot of different things to make it look even more expensive. And then if it went out of fashion, you just, as I said, slowly use like your old clothes and morph them into something that is more up to date. Anyways, that's for some reason why like i sometimes baffle myself of like yeah i wanted to talk about castles and now i'm talking about medieval fashion or medieval renaissance style fashion i mean i definitely took inspiration from like torian era or like somewhat around that era when it was like yeah i want to wear a vest because i mean i just want to like i've been looking for waistcoats like actual like old style waistcoats it's not the only reason that i like to wear a vest i also just like vests because they give that i don't know like i just like wearing suits and when it comes to suits it just when i'm wearing a suit i feel like confident and proud and just somewhat dominant i don't know <laughs> but there's also just like i like l looking like i just jumped out of the 1800s anyway I, this is not saying i want to live in the 1800s i don't want to live in anything else but the present because let's just put it like this if i lived in the 1800s i definitely wouldn't be like part of like the 10 percent that lived well 10 percent that was like upper class and then ev even then diseases and everything and then renaissance was just even worse because like you could be royalty black death would or the bubonic plague would still carry you off because bloodletting if you broke a bone yeah let's um let's amputate it or like if you broke a leg, let's amputate it. Or if you had like a minor cut. Oh yeah, you didn't know about infection, so maybe that would kill you later on. Anyways, uh, that's just a side tangent there. I like looking and just learning about history. I don't want to live anywhere near history. I like living in the present, potentially the future, but then we don't know what's going to happen in the future, so let's just live in the present. Anyways, going back to the castle, there's also this thing that I want to talk about when it comes to, oh yeah, it's a very old building. A lot of the times there are ghost stories about old buildings. And while I'm not really a superstitious person, I mean, I would... Actually, I like the idea of, like, ghosts being real. Although I don't really believe in them. This is... Like, I'm going to go more into this topic in another video. I know this for sure, because I have a story to tell here. But I don't have enough time in this video anymore to tell that story. But when it comes to this castle, I actually like for there to be, like, a ghost story about this castle. The story that I came up with is that in history somewhere like maybe let's put it like in the 14 1500s a lord and his wife traveled away from this castle to i don't know pay homage to like their ruler and then they came back although the lord came back earlier for some reason and so his wife came back later on a different ship however the wife's ship was basically sunk because of like a storm so I just like the story then that like the Lord didn't like he didn't take the death of his wife well 
and so he never remarried he did have children already but he never remarried and then after he died there's now the claims of the lord being sighted walking the castle battlements at night looking at the ocean still hoping for his wife to ever return although of course we know that she drowned when her ship was sunk by a storm or maybe pirates some way i definitely want to go for a storm though for some reason storm makes it more like nobody had control over the situation and i just like the idea of like not not having like the ghostly bride or the ghostly wife waiting for her, her husband to return from war or her husband disappeared for some reason i like just like the lord just like walking the battlements looking over the ocean or looking out towards the sea just hoping for his wife to return i just like that idea but anyways that's going to be it for today's video i hope you enjoyed it this took a long time to build so the next video is probably going to be a lot shorter or at least the build is going to be a lot less intensive Maybe it's going to be a habitat. But anyways, I will see you in the next video. Of course, don't forget to hit the like button because it does help out a lot with the video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more. There's also the notification button. But before that one starts working, the Lord's wife will return and I will stop talking about historical fashion. But anyways, have a wonderful day, guys. Bye-bye.